In this video, we'll set up an interactive chart in Excel where you can select a date range. From the Start cell, select any date from the drop-down, and the same thing in the End cell, and the chart changes to show the sales from that time period. This is Deborah Dalgleish from Contextures.com. In this video, I'm using sales data that has a date, the item sold, color, and the number of units. And you can download this data from my website and then follow along, or you could use data of your own and make something similar. The first step is to change this list, which is just typed on the worksheet, and we'll make this into a named Excel table. And to do that, select any cell in the list, and then on the Home tab, Click Format as Table, and you've got a selection of colors and designs here. I'll pick this blue. It now wants to know where the data is for this table, and we've got our headings and all the data selected. We also want a check mark here for My Table Has Headers, because we've got headers in row 1, and click OK. Up on the ribbon, you'll see Table Design, which tells you the cell selected is in a named table. If I click Table Design, we can see that Excel gave this table a default name. I'm going to change this so it's more meaningful if we were to refer to this table in formulas. So I'll select the default name and type TBL Sales. Now that we've created an Excel table, we're going to create some dynamic ranges based on the columns of the table. We want to have a list of dates so that we can select the start and end dates for the chart. And if I point to the top of the heading cell for date, there's a black arrow pointing down. And when I click there, it selects all the way down to the bottom of that table. If I add more rows, when I get more sales data, if I clicked here again, it would go all the way down to a new row. So this is a dynamic date range that we're going to create. And now I'm going to name that by clicking in this name box and typing a one word name for this list. So I'm going to call it date list. And it's important to press enter after you use that name box. And now if I go to the name box, I can select date list and it selects all the dates in that column. Next, we're going to create two more dynamic ranges, one for the color column and one for the units column. Click at the top of the color column to select all of those cells, click in the name box, and type a one word name, color list. Press enter, and then click at the top of the units column, click in the name box, type a one word name, units list. Press enter, and now we have three dynamic named ranges. Next, we're going to set up the chart sheet. Right now, in the sample file, it's blank. We'll be adding some headings, drop-down lists for the dates, a range of cells with our totals for each color, and a chart. First, we'll make the drop-down list for the dates. In cell C1, I'll type the heading Start. Tab over to E1 and type End. These two cells are going to have a drop-down list of dates, and both of them will use the same list. So I've got C2 selected. Now I'll press Control and click to select E2. We're going to use data validation to create drop-down lists based on the date list. So go to the Data tab, click Data Validation, and in here we want to allow a list. The source is that named range date list. The quickest way to get this is to click in the box and then on your keyboard press the F3 key and that will show you a list of the names we've created. We want date list, click OK, and it puts it in that source box with an equal sign in front of it. If the F3 key doesn't work for you, just type equal sign date list. 
and then click OK. And now if we click this cell, we've got a drop down list. So use that and pick any date and go to the end box and pick a date after the one you picked. Now we can see we've got a little formatting that we need to do here. E2 is selected. I'll press Control and select C2. To format them, I'm going to the Home tab and I'll put all borders around them. I'll put in a fill color so they stand out. And for the date format, I'm going to pick a short date. Next, we're going to set up a little summary list below where the chart will go. We'll have a list of our colors and a total amount for the sales of each color in this date range. I'm going to list the colors starting in cell B15, red, yellow, green, and blue. And once we've got the headings, we're going to put formulas in column C. To get a total for each color in a date range, we're going to use the sum ifs function. That will let us get a total based on one or more criteria. So in here, I'm going to start by typing equal sum ifs. First thing we have to enter is the sum range. We want to add something up, and that's our units column, which we've named units list. Next, criteria range one. What should it check? We want to compare the list of dates with the date that we have here in the start cell. We want anything that is greater than or equal to that start date. So I'm going to type date list as the range, comma. The criteria is this start cell, but we want to put in some operators first. To do that, I'm going to type a double quote, then greater than, equal to, double quote, then ampersand, and now we can put in the cell reference, and I want to lock that, because as I copy this formula down, I want every row to check this row. Now a comma, and we're going to check the date list again, and this time we're going to compare to the end date, and for this, we're going to use less than or equal to. So double quote, ampersand, and click on the end date, press F4 to lock the row and column for that, comma, and the final check will be the color list. And compare to this color. We don't want to lock that because it should adjust as the formula gets copied down. Close the bracket, and there's our total for red. Now I select that cell, and I can drag it down to see the totals for all the colors. And if I pick a different end date, then those numbers go down. We've got a smaller date range. Now that we have the totals for each color for the date range, we can create a chart. We're going to use these cells as the chart source data. So select the headings and the formula cells, then go to the insert tab. We want a column chart, so click the arrow here, we'll use this first type of 2D column chart, which is a clustered column. When I click that, it puts a big chart in the middle of the worksheet. We can move it over a bit. Right now, all the columns are blue. I would like them to match their label color. If I click once on red, all of the columns are selected. So if I do any formatting now, it would format all of them. I'm going to click again on red, and that will select just it. If I right click, I get a fill color, so I can choose red there. Now if I click on yellow, only the yellow is selected now. And again, right click, see if you can find a yellow, right click on green, find green, and blue is already blue. So now we have our four colors. I'm going to delete the chart title, just click on it, Press Delete, and now I have a couple of choices. If I want this data to show, I could just make the chart a bit smaller so it fits between these date selections and the chart data. 
or if you don't need to see that, just make the chart bigger so it covers all of the data. And now to test the chart, pick a different date and everything changes automatically.